American Conference along with Shiz Alston of Temple. Hey, look, BJ's denying him already. <laughs> you got to start from the tip. He's denying him from the tip. <laughs> And the tip one, as it often is, by seven foot six, Taco Fall. Here is Fall, gets the touch, gets the rebound and the dunk. Big fella, don't be so mean. You know, Taco's gone from just being big to being a, a good basketball player. <laughs> An incredible story for Taco Fall in his final year of collegiate basketball. Here is Jeremiah Martin drawing an early UCF foul. That'll go against B.J. Taylor, his counterpart on the other side. Taco Fall is one of the 40 tallest people on earth. Makes it a little bit easier to do things like this. You know, they have that in their game notes. I, 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 prove it. <laughs> I don't know he's one of the 40s. I don't, don't, don't want to sit here and break it down for you <laughs> as he gets positioned for the rebound. He's the tallest player in Division One at seven foot six. He clears out the lane for Terrell Allen. You know, we said earlier, just all jokes aside, having Taco out there alters how you do everything. It alters yeah. how the officials officiate the game. Missed three by Mike Parks. Now, Kelvin Sampson had a great quote when UCF beat Houston at the Fertitta Center. He said, Taco Fall takes away half your playbook. There's a foul on Martin as he picks an early one up. Martin coming off a 21 point five rebound seven assist game where he had three steals and two blocks over two lane in the 5 12 contest yesterday An 83 to 68 win Taylor gets the friendly roll the leading scorer for the Knights Taylor who makes tough layups who makes tough shots you're gonna see him living in the lane all day today getting to the foul line Martin backs into the corner and Taco Falls and there's another rebound. His third already. The junior, Terrell Allen, with the ball. He's going to have the assignment of guarding Martin most of the time that he's in there. As they get back, right now, they're kind of shading Taylor over towards Martin. Remember, Taylor already has a foul. It was just because of transition. Yeah. They can pick it up. If, if it's a set defense, uh, Allen will be on one. Yeah. Now it's a tough assignment for Colin Smith on that switch, and Martin takes advantage of it. <laughs> Memphis, a 20 win campaign in Penny Hardaway's first season. Here is Smith. It's interesting to note as we start this game, Thornton is just denying Dawkins. Martin misses the open one and gets it back. Here's the aforementioned Thornton. Martin gets the offensive rebound again for Memphis. Kid's a player. I mean, it's easy to talk about his, 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 his scoring, averaging over 30 points in February, but Martin, is a he does everything on the court. A look at who's on the floor. It's brought to us by Air Force Reserve. There is Thornton and Martin with Davenport, Parks, and Bruton. That's the Memphis starting five. They've used 11 different lineup combinations this year. And that's been a lot of Penny Hardaway trying to find the right combo. It is not lost on us today as he's had those 11 different combinations. <laughs> Smith. <laughs> Mr. Smith. That's a, a rainbow for his ninth three-pointer made in the season. But what I was saying, as it comes down to winning time towards the end of the season, he's gone with the seniors. And that's the yep. group that he's leaning on coming down the stretch here. They all haven't played four years at Memphis, but there's a lot of seniors on this team that make up the experienced roster. Bruton gets a friendly roll. He is one of those seniors, a junior college transfer. Three, 
pace is going to be interesting to keep track of. Memphis plays at a very fast pace. UCF plays at a particularly slower pace. Look at who's on the floor for UCF. Brought to us by the Air Force Reserve. Taylor, Dawkins, and Fall are the three big pods. But Smith is getting into the action. He leads the way with five. No, it's, and Smith is key. When they have played well, it's when he has scored. Everyone knows you're going to get what you're going to get from B.J. Taylor. You're going to get what you get from Aubrey Dawkins. If Taco scores double figures, they almost always win. But if, if Smith steps up, he gives them a third big-time score. Taco Fall is going to get credit for the block. Allen hits on the other end. And naturally, the partisan crowd was vocal in their disapproval of a no call as Taco Fall, the leading shot blocker in the American Conference, picks up his 74th of the year. Timeout, Penny Hardaway. It relates to basketball, UCF, for bringing this group together. And let's not forget, they had major injuries all of last year. Without injuries yep. last year, they probably would have been a tournament team. Taco Fall missed 16 games with a shoulder injury last year. B.J. Taylor missed 16 games with a broken left foot in the opening game, came back for the second half of the year. And Aubrey Dawkins missed the entire season when he was expected to play for the first time for his dad with a shoulder injury. Those are all three guys that were all conference selections for UCF this year. And, and in that... As the Isaiah game, Maurice hits for Memphis, coach. The game that BJ came back was a game that Taco got hurt. That's right. They so they never got to play together. Half of a game of the whole season last year. An incredible job. And this was a UCF team picked to win the conference. That's how much firepower people knew that they were going to have this year. They leave Colin Smith open again. Not really his game, although he has knocked down a three already. He wants it to be he his game. He wants it to be his game. A, a, a little more than reality. Yeah, exactly. But he is an inside-outside person. He's, he's not, maybe not from three, but he's pretty good away from the basket. Well, they couldn't get the easy two because Maurice lost it, so he just says, all right, I'll back into the corner and hit a three. Just his 11th three-pointer of the season. <laughs> I can't wait for Taco Fall to start launching threes later on in this game. <laughs> Christmas for <laughs> Chad Brown replaced Fall in the lineup. He's out there for UCF. Colin Smith over Keevan Davenport. Now back the other way. Davenport hits over Smith to tie the game. The perimeter guys with Harris and and and, and Bruton and those guys have been the the, the, the support staff to Martin. Um, but hey, if they get it going, this crowd gets going. It's gonna be a long afternoon for UCF. A couple of guards have checked in. Both freshmen, Tyler Harris and Alex Lomax, part of a really good freshman class for Memphis. Dawkins way off target. Johnny Dawkins talking to his son there. Yeah, the ball just didn't go in. Yep. He's going to keep shooting. Memphis right now with three freshmen on the court. With Harris, Davenport, and Jones. Antoine Jones, the freshman out of Orlando, into the game as well. Maurice travels. A lot of these kids are Memphis kids, both Harris and Lomax, both from Memphis. Of course, Lomax played high school ball for Penny Hardaway. Hardaway, the coach at East High School here in Memphis, before taking the head job. Six of the players on this roster are hometown kids. And that trend continues for next year's recruiting class as well. Yep. Offensive foul against UCF as Taylor was coming around the screen. Terrell Allen gets tagged for the foul. And that takes us to the under 12. We're tied at 11. Three other teams, two other teams. Give me two out of this group that you feel confident about other than Duke making the Final Four right now. 
Tennessee and UVA. Why Tennessee? The, the, Not that it's a surprising answer, I'm sure, but why do you feel that? You know, I saw them here in this building. Yeah. One of Memphis's uh, two losses for the year. At home. As Harris hits a three to take the lead for the first time. And they're just a veteran. They're so poised. There's nothing you can do to rattle them. They're going to keep coming. They're going to keep doing what they do at a high level. Yeah. And they got two of the best players in the country. Grant Williams and Admiral Schofield's had a really good year. Williams could easily be national player of the year. Taylor pushed it. And a foul called against UCF. It'll go against Taco Fall, his first. You heard the guys in studio, Chris Jordan and Chris, talking about it. Can he stay on the floor? He only averages about 24 minutes a game. Yeah, and you see, when he went out for his blow is when Memphis went on that little run That's right. right. They were down seven. They came back to tie it, and they're on a 10-0 run. Harris with a miss on the floater. There's Big Chad Brown, offensive foul. Big Chad Brown made that easy on the officials right there. He just put his head down and was flying in there. Yeah, Keevan Davenport in legal position outside the arc. When Chad Brown comes out. Frank Burtz, who plays about 11 minutes a game. The junior at six foot five comes on, so UCF gets a little smaller. Although, do they really get smaller if Taco falls in the, in the game? I'm not sure. No, you don't. Yeah, I didn't really feel like it, right? And Brown will probably be back shortly. Yeah. Brown or Smith. Those guys play key minutes. Davenport gets it to go. It's a 12-0 Memphis run. Davenport making it tough on Dawkins. What defense by Kevin Davenport. Tigers running. Davenport for three. And Dawkins clears. That would have been too good to be true. <laughs> yeah, do it in both ends. Oh, Dawkins. Crowd thought he traveled. Couldn't finish at the rim. And Harris out of the pack. It's Martin for Harris. Maurice came flying in, nearly stole it. And it's cleared by Burtz. Dawkins trying to step through, had it stripped by Alex Lomax. What a recovery. The crowd's going to like the hustle from the Tigers. But without a doubt, they're flying all over the place. UCF is getting nothing easy. Nice jab, jab. Davenport, who has the ability to be an elite defender, can guard multiple positions, making a hard on Dawkins right there. And then the two freshman guards, Harris. Mixes it up on him, and then Lomax comes running through to knock it out of bounds. Aubrey Dawkins, they're, they're paying special attention to him. They're trying to make sure he doesn't get out of the bag. Yeah. He's their leading scorer at 15 a game. Second leading scorer, beg your pardon. Double on Taco. Allen back to Taco Fall. He's got two dunks already in this game. That now makes it 76 dunks on the year. And you know, that started with inbounding the ball. No one was open. And what a luxury UCF Yeah, has. it's like, well, if just I can't find throw somebody, just, throw, just throw, it throw, it up. throw it up there. Believe it or not, I've never had that issue before. Nobody's ever yeah. looked to me to try to bail them out of an inbound sport. Isaiah Maurice misses. The tip try from Thornton nearly went down. We get a foul called. We want to take another look at this. And top perimeter defender in terms of steals this year, so that is an issue. If he's in foul trouble, and clearly frustrated. He's just a little frustrated. I think because of what I said. I, I think it was an inadvertent sure. hook. I don't think it was a hold at all. I think it was an inadvertent hook right there. It was not the, the is not the, the, the intent of the rule was to stop the intentional. I slide my arm under yours and I flail back. 
Um, and that did not happen. Right. I think a Kelly Olynyk in the playoffs with Kevin Love yes, a few years correct. back. That, exactly. that, that, that series, that Celtics Cavs series. And we mentioned Isaiah Haas, or Isaac Haas, beg your pardon, who had the injury for Purdue during the tournament last year. They don't want the intentional hooking and holding, but that's where the frustration has come in. Off the inbound, Bruton gets a good look. And rebounded by Fall. Mike Parks trying to guard Taco Fall. Little running hook for Taco. He's got six. No, that, I mean, it, he's, he's improved. I mean, it's one thing to talk about is his tippy toe dunks, but Taco took his time right there, was poised, set it up. Nice little hook shot right there. He's a lot better. And he's one of the most efficient players in the country. Martin draws a foul. He's going to go to the line. Dayon Griffin committed it. You see him foul number. So Martin to the free throw line. The co-scoring leader with Shiz Alston of Temple in the conference this year has been absolutely tearing it up since the start of February. Remember he had that 41 point second half against USF well, and, ever, and ever since then he's averaging 28 and a half a game. Do I remember? I was <laughs> you there. Were there for it. I was, it was, it was a, maybe the most unbelievable half of collegiate basketball that I have personally ever seen. Yeah. I'm not talking about the pros. I'm talking about a 20 minute college half. Yeah. He dropped 41. An efficient, non-greedy 41. Yeah. He had a 43 game, a couple of, uh, 43 point game a couple of games later against Tulane. That's his career high. Ball hits the deck. I mean, that, that shows how far Taco has come. Taco is one or two feet off the block, I believe, and they're doubling Taco fall. That would not have been the case about two years ago. Not at all. Even last year. B.J. Taylor slips inside, and there's the second bucket for UCF's leading scorer. You know, we talk about how, how, how Paco disrupts an offense. Memphis's defense has kind of kept UCF off kilter so far at the start of this game. Tough shot for Bruton. Saved by Parks. What a play. Jones finds Thornton at the rim and lose to UCF. Burks pull up three for the lead. Rebound tipped and out of bounds to Memphis. It'll be Tiger Ball on the other side. Taco Fall expanding the game in the range. The tournament title. Belmont has had a good enough season to make it, in a lot of people's opinions, to the NCAA as an at large. No, without a doubt. And, and you're going to have all the discussions over the next few days here of, of the number of teams with close to 500 records from the Power Five conferences and, and a team like a Belmont or Lipscomb that, that may be on the outside looking in. Um, and that th those are healthy discussions to have. Sure. UCF is led by as many as seven. Memphis has led by as many as five. Back and forth opening half. Our second quarterfinal game, the Air Force Reserve American Athletic Conference Championship. Here's Maurice, suddenly stroking it from outside, his second three. <laughs> he makes, makes nine on the year, hit two today. Yep. But you know, that's one of those things, mentally you get ready. You know, Taco's going to be guarding me. I know I'm going to be open. He comes into this game ready to make it. Whereas most of his other mates probably was, oh, am I open? Should I shoot it? Should I not shoot it? Right. And a lot of these he decided last night when I'm opening the <laughs> Smith left it short, and it's snared by Harris. Tigers are playing very good defense this morning. Harris pops. 
Harris thought he was still back in high school. That's, That's right. High school shots right there. Transition three for Frank Burtz. He can trigger from the outside, and he cuts the lead to two. Junior out of California in his first year after coming over from Juco. Giving it to UCF, traveling violation. Penny Hardaway thought there could have been a foul there. Had it been called on fall, it would have been his second, obviously, concern. But instead, it goes back to UCF. Penny and about 15,000 other people. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. uh, Biased crowd, to say the least. Maurice doing everything he can to try to guard Taco Fall, and he will get a foul call here against him. Now he's trying to guard the Empire State Building. <laughs> <laughs> he can't get around him. Taco's always open. Yes. <laughs> if you can't feed the post, if you can't feed Taco in the post, you need to hang up your, your sneakers. Pick to Griffin. And Fall is going to pick up his second foul at the 519 mark. Memphis is in the bonus, so Maurice gets one and one. Taco Fall has only fouled out of a game one time this year, and he's only fouled out six times in his entire career, spanning 112 games. It's more about the minutes that he plays and the space that he takes up, along with the obvious production. And then the other end, you got Mr. Maurice. Ooh, how about this first half for this exactly. young man? 10 points. 10 of his team's 24 points. This is only the seventh time he's had double digit points. Coach, the other thing I was curious about as we got ready for this game is Griffin hits the three. The pace of play. Memphis plays at one of the top and highest paces in college basketball. UCF plays at an exceptionally slow pace. How has the pace played out in your estimation of the first 15 minutes? Well, one thing, when people start talking about pace, a lot of times the casual fan thinks and, and equates that to how fast they dribble up and shoot the ball. Right. But the reality is UCF's defense is so good that their opposition takes longer to shoot. And a lot of times, if you have really good defensive teams, the pace is always slower because the like guys sure numbers of possessions. You're saying yeah. exactly. I mean, I mean, it's going to take Memphis longer to score in this game than it will in in in, in other games. And so, I mean, but if you just look at the sheer numbers, this is at UCF's pace right here. We right. got four four thirty five, and we're talking twenty four twenty three. That being said, I think Memphis has done a very good job defensively, particularly with Aubrey Dawkins. UCF hasn't fallen into a flow yet offensively. And Smith commits a traveling violation. Maurice playing good defense on this end. Oh, yeah. yeah he's not used to these minutes. He needs a ventilator. Well, Smith averages about 22 minutes a game. Maurice only plays 13 minutes a game for Memphis. Averages about five and a half. He's in double figures here in the first half. No, it was more recent I think was tired. Yeah, yeah. It, it, only 13 a game. Here is Harris for three. Davenport is there to fly in and tip it home. That's what they need from him. Be the energizer, Bernie. Fly all over the place. Get your team exercise. That, that, that's a key in Davenport play that we need to see more of. Fourth in the American in rebounding this year at seven per game. Dawkins has not scored in this first half. Smith over Maurice. He's got seven. I mean, Dawkins hasn't scored, and B.J. Taylor has four points. And yet. And it's a one-point game. That's right. You know, so as, as disjointed as their offense has been, Coach Dawkins might be, feel pretty good going into halftime. 
And UCF not afraid to play at a grinded out pace. Martin sets up Davenport. Baked it in, count it, and a foul away from the ball. Foul on Memphis, though, on Maurice. I think the basket is still. And that, hopefully, you know, and I say that not as a fan of, of anyone out there, but just the two best teams. Let's get the two best yeah. teams in the championship game. Coach Hopkins takes the two three. How about takes, that? takes the zone out west. And no one's figured it out yet. Yeah, a lot of people believe he was the successor in waiting to Jim Beheim. Opted to take the head coaching job some years earlier than that when Jim was staying at Syracuse. And what a job Mike Hopkins did at Washington this year. B.J. Taylor with his third bucket of the game. Cuts the lead down to two with inside of three to play in the first half of the second quarter final. Grabbed by Parks. And he's able to finish at the rim. And that's another assist on Martin. That was not a shot. That was a pass. The young man only has five points, but that's his fourth assist. Yep. Smith banging away against Parks. Too strong. Yeah, Parks is. Ooh. Martin almost lost it, recovered it. Martin sets up Davenport. <laughs> Largest lead at seven for Memphis. And, and Davenport's making all his signs and looking at the fans. He needs to look at Mr. Martin and say thank you. Because Martin's getting Davenport all his baskets except for that one putback we had. We saw. Taylor can't connect. And a foul called on UCF. Foul called on Colin Smith. Four assists for Martin. Yeah, and he's, he's an elite scorer. I mean, and he's on a roll. But he's so unselfish. He gets in there, kicks it. He knows Davenport's hot. Kicks it out to his boy. He was looking to pass that one. It just got deflected. You're correct. That, that, I mean, that was a pass. We're giving him that assist also. And then, down the other end, he throws his body in there for the rebound, draws the foul going after the defensive rebound, and ends up back at, at the foul line. I mean, he's not just a scorer. He's a really, he's an elite, elite scorer. But he's a really good basketball player who takes pride in all aspects of the game. Remember that Jeremiah Martin did not have an opportunity to play in the American Conference Tournament last year because he had that broken left foot against Houston in February, missed the final stretch of the season. So he was itching and raring to go, and sure enough, he has helped for a 10-2 Memphis run. Offensive foul on Brown for a moving screen. And, and I tell you, a very good game plan by Coach Hardaway. The decision is to face guard Aubrey Dawkins, who's just standing over in the corner. They're calling that. I thought he was settled. I thought he was settled. I'm not sure about that call right there. Yeah, Johnny Dawkins agrees with you. He says, hey, he was standing there. Yeah, I, th I think he was. You know, but in general, you know, they have Thornton, they've rotated between Thornton and Davenport, just face guarding Aubrey Dawkins. Yeah. And it's completely taking him out of this game. If Dawkins doesn't have a point. He's 0 for 4 from the floor. Davenport. Got it back. Strip. Jones had it momentarily. Thornton flings it out to Jones. It's a fresh shot clock. Thornton forces one up anyway. Harris runs it down in UCF. Commits a foul with Burtz. And that will send Antoine Jones to the line after a hectic sequence. Hectic, man. That, that sequence, I, I was nervous over here that, just watching that. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a catastrophe ready to happen on every pass. You said it when our broadcast started. Memphis is no joke here at home. There have been two teams to come in here and win a game. Both of them are ranked in the top 25. Tennessee, who's been one of the best teams all season, and Cincinnati, who's been one of the best teams in this league since it began. Now, the energy that they get off these fans is tangible. It's, it's worth points on offense, and it's worth stops on defense for this group. Penny Hardaway 
His arrival spurred the excitement again. This is one of the great basketball towns in America with the Grizzlies and with the Tigers. But attendance bumped up way up this year with the arrival of Penny Hardaway, the former Memphis State Tiger. Ten-point lead for the first time tonight. Impressive defensive effort by the Tigers yeah. inside. Taylor with a bad pass. And does a good job of diving on the floor and calling a timeout. Will save the possession with three to shoot on the other side. We're back in 30 seconds. The American Conference to make the tournament, that would be a conference record. Now, and that, and that, I mean, they have to obviously play well in the next couple days here. And they're going to need somebody else, more people than Martin, to step up like Maurice has done so far today. Late in the shot clock, out of the inbound, and Taylor travels with the basketball. A frustrating close, I would think, for Johnny Dawkins and the Knights in this first half. No, without a doubt. I mean, 27 points. They've done a decent job on defense, but they just can't get into their flow offensively. Final seconds. It's Martin. They will not get the shot off. Memphis does close the first half on an 8-0 run. And they score 33 of the final 49 points. 12 points, 6 boards. Was very active. He has to be that, that active player that gets the 50 50 ball, he gets the loose balls, and he's bringing that energy so far in this game. 12.6 rebounds in the first half. The key number was eight. Memphis had eight points off turnovers. They went plus eight at the free throw line, and they finished the half on an 8 0 run. Tigers on top by 10. There's Taco Fall with the block of Martin. Still four to shoot. Bruton all the way. Fall may have deterred that shot a little bit as well. May have. <laughs> you know, Bruton right there, dude, that's not the wise time to go mano a mano and try to take the ball to Taco. Pull up, shoot to the mid-range, actually kick it out the dab before he's on the way. Yeah. I don't think Johnny Dawkins was too happy with that shot from his son Aubrey just then. Kind of a quick trigger early in the shot clock. Well, that's one of the few times today that Aubrey's touched the ball when the person has been right he actually, under he, actually had, he was open. Exactly. He goes, hey, this is new. There's Parks. But that one's short. He's not a three-point shooter at all. He's only attempted eight of them this year. You know, and, and you said it. Memphis has done a terrific job on the boards. UCF has two offensive rebounds for the game. That's, That's how Aubrey can get back involved, get on the boards. Davenport picks up a seventh rebound. That's his average. When Memphis beat UCF here in Memphis, they won by 20 points. They out-rebounded the Knights by 20, or beg your pardon, by 18 in that game, and they had 21 offensive rebounds themselves. Memphis dominated the glass when they beat UCF in this building. And they're not, we're not at the point to say domination just yet. But they're controlling the boards right now. Controlling right now, right now yeah. plus five right now. And, and, you know, I've said it before. When you're having a game like this, when you're off, because of Memphis's defense, UCF's offense just isn't clicking, just isn't working, then they, they got to get on the boards. You have to get out and transition. You have to find other ways to score. You know, they, right now, they're content with just coming down. They're, they're getting shots, taking the shot. Okay, it doesn't go in. We're heading back the other way. Two offensive rebounds. They need more if they're going to win this game. Right. The foul was called on Dawkins. Colin Smith will get a breather here. Park splits. Largest lead at 11. Dawkins watched by Thornton now. Stripped away by Martin, and it went off the leg of B.J. Taylor. UCF has to, has to regroup. Starting to see some long faces out there. Yeah. Communication with each other has, has decreased. They have to get back on the same page.
with Jeremiah Martin, who had seven points and four assists in the first half. Nice slip pass as Davenport finds Parks. A foul called against UCF. It will not be against Taco Fall. It's Deion Griffin, his second. And that sends Parks back to the strike. I see down the other end if, if Coach Dawkins and see if UCF goes into Taco. Let him get some touches down there. Not necessarily score, but to see if he can draw a crowd and make something happen. They, they so far, and they're really two minutes and some change into the half. Right. But they've just been floating around the perimeter, floating around the perimeter. They have to, and, and, and Memphis is making it hard for them to penetrate. So they have to get the ball into the paint a different kind of way than, than off the dribble. Well, UCF, a team that gets to the free throw line a bunch, 25 times a game, they have yet to shoot a free throw in this game. Saved by Bruton. And Memphis coming up with another rebound. Yep. They hit the offensive glass again. Nine offensive rebounds for the Tigers. Bruton. Thornton, beg your pardon. Rainier Thornton into the book with his first points of the night. It's a 14-point lead for Memphis. foul against Bruton his first foul you see Martin once again making the extra pass mm -hmm. Thornton ends up with the three in the corner and, and they're going to get that and so you know you have to figure out it was more recent the first half is Thornton right there UCF is going to give their bigs that shot can they make enough to win so far it looks like it All right, so here's a paint touch for taco fall and he draws a foul and will head to the free throw line. No, and that's what I'm talking about. You, you, give it to yeah, the big paint right You there. said you wanted to see a paint touch, and there was one right there. Exactly. And I thought I thought that uh, Memphis would come at him and double. They didn't. Now Taco's got to make his foul shots, but kind of make Memphis start to think about him in the paint a little bit, and then I'll open everything else up. Taco. Not having a great free throw shooting year. Just with that shoulder injury that he dealt with last season. Happy to be back in the lineup. Born in Senegal as a soccer player growing up. Didn't play basketball. Moved to the United States at age 16. Lived in Houston for a year. Actually trained with Ben Simmons. And both of those guys work with Akeem Olajuwon. What a move by Kareem Bruton. Yeah, UCF splintering a little bit. Taco got out a little bit too wide to allow the split. When your guy's coming off that, if you're big right there, you can't jump out there and let him split. Just stay below your man, stay, stay to touch. But you can't just jump out there that wide. The third foul on Griffin, and Bruton finishes off the three-point play. Up to 16. Allen had it stripped by Bruton. Jeremiah Martin had it knocked away. Good play by Griffin to recover. And then Davenport commits a foul. <laughs> the place is ready to erupt. Oh, yes. Pick, pick, pick. Penny was even pointing for the lob. Once again, <laughs> great defense by Memphis. Putin comes up with it. And then Davenport with the reach in there, his second foul. I just looked at Penny as soon as you said he was looking for the lob. He he was looking at Jeremiah Martin yeah. pointing up. Going, hey, throw, throw it, it up it. there for your guy. Throw it. <laughs> Penny Hardaway, one of three new head coaches in the American Conference this year. First year as a college coach after winning three consecutive state championships at Memphis East High School. Before that, he was a program builder for an AAU club team. Only really began coaching because a childhood friend of his from middle school was hospitalized while he was coaching his team. Asked Penny to fill in for him, and that's how he got his first taste of coaching. 
Isaiah Maurice stepping up on the defense, making it very tough for Taylor. And out of bounds to Memphis. They're, they're having, they meaning UCF, is having a hard time getting anything off the bounce. You know, that's what, that's what I said earlier, just throw it in the taco to get your paint touched. Go get an offensive rebound to get your paint touched. But just taking Memphis off the bounce is not working today. And now Taco Fall has to kind of come out on the perimeter a little bit more to defend because of Maurice. Maurice had a couple of threes in that first half. Taco needs a blow. Okay, he's running up the floor. Gets the offensive rebound and puts it back in. And he was fine. You know, this, this goes back to that conversation we were having. It's hard to officiate with a big man because it doesn't look like they're getting fouled, but they are getting fouled. Yeah, they're slapping him all around his chest and stomach. Maurice looking for Davenport. Ooh, tough collision with Allen. It'll be a foul on Allen, his third, and that takes us to a timeout of the round to the last four in. A loss doesn't necessarily eliminate them or anything like that, but a win is exceptionally important for Fran Dunphy's crew tonight. And a win against a Wichita State team, it's not going to be an easy win. Well, you, you, you said they play better and better as the years gone on, They're right? They're playing really well right now. Their young guys are selling in. Their newcomers are selling in. Well, it's the end of the year. Coach Marshall is, is one of the best that does it. So that's, that's a really big, really important game tonight. Yeah. How about that offensive rebound by Rainier Thornton? Good defense by Dawkins. Now, er, earlier, early in the game, I, I said in jest that Harris thinks he's still in high school. One of the shots he took in the first half. That one he needed to let fly. That's right, it's wide open. Wide open. Let it fly, baby. There you go. There, here he there is. you go. That's okay. And he got Ooh. the offensive rebound. Splash. Oof. Tipped up and in by Rainier Thornton, who just banged glass on that trip and took a shot to the chops in the meantime well, well UCF needs to decide they want to win they give up three maybe four offensive rebounds in one possession they're not they're not competing at a level that they need to right now Isaiah Maurice picks up his third let's see if we can find where Thornton got hit it's off the cylinder I mean that might just be a taco forearm into the face yeah, Taco took a hit, a hit right there, too. It's yeah. just two guys going for the ball. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing, nothing to worry about on that. Memphis has tied its largest lead of 16. Davenport, another offensive rebound, and there's the third foul on Taco Ball. Energize the bunny. They're going to, they're going to Davenport in the post. They've tried to go to him a few times. It's a pretty good passer down there. Keevan Davenport didn't really have the same relationship with Penny Hardaway that a lot of other guys did. He's a junior college guy. He's from Georgia, not a local guy. But Penny Hardaway decided, I'm going to take Keevan Davenport to American Conference Media Days. And he said that on the flight to Philadelphia for the Conference Media Days, he sat next to Keevan Davenport. They built the relationship on the flight there and the flight back. And that gave Kevin Davenport a ton of confidence. He's playing with a ton of confidence, as are these Tigers today. Absolutely. Also playing like a senior that wants to keep playing. A good play by Griffin to strip Davenport. Taylor taking the contact. And two shots coming on the Thornton foul. Team foul. Both teams have five fouls each. But the different colored kicks. I like that. You do? From Rainier Thorne. I, I, I can dig it. I'm just going to say this. If you come to a game <laughs> and you have on different color shoes intentionally, 
You need to bring a little bit more than five <laughs> points and four rebounds to the table, in my opinion. You, you, you didn't like the putback just there? You don't like the offensive but, rebound? Uh, we need more of that. <laughs> I got some you. Tangibles I got you. And something <laughs> coming with the black and the white Listen, shoes. Listen, man, I just, saw, I just saw P.J. Tucker of the Houston Rockets. That guy wears, like, 12 different shoes before the game even begins, right? He's the biggest sneakerhead in the NBA. Yeah, but once the ball goes up, does he have one of the yeah, same shoes? I, mean, I think sometimes yeah. once in a while, as Jones knocks down that jumper, everybody getting into the act now for Memphis as they go up 17. Smith, good patience by Colin Smith. At some point, it's not, maybe not quite yet, but UCF's going to have to extend their defense a little bit. Memphis is just extremely comfortable down this end. They're getting the shots they want. And then when they don't get the shot, they're getting the second shot. So I'm crashing the offensive board. The 13 offensive rebounds. This game. It's the sixth turnover by Memphis in the combination. Dawkins cutting, and there's a reach in by Thornton, his second foul. But I like the movement right there by Aubrey Dawkins. He seemed content just to let himself get denied. That time you see him moving well without the ball and cutting. He's, he's, he's got to pick up his energy level right here. They, they don't want him to get it. I mean, it's been Thornton, it's been Davenport, just face guarding. Tough hook by Burks. Bruton into the body of Colin Smith. Well, don't forget that over on ESPN2, here on ESPN2, we'll continue with the Big 12 semifinals presented by Phillips 66. Kansas State and Bruce Weber finally dethroning the Kansas Jayhawks this year. We could see a Sunflower State collision in Kansas City coming up tomorrow if those two advance tonight. There's Mike Miller. The two-time NBA champion with the Heat, the Rookie of the Year for the Magic, and a Sixth Man of the Year for the Grizzlies. He's a, a very integral piece to this all-star coaching staff for Memphis as well this year. No, no, I, I, th that's, a that's a veteran staff over there, guys that have played a lot, guys that have coached a lot. Mike Miller is, is an outstanding piece to the puzzle that, that, that Coach Hardaway has put together on his bench. Much like Penny, very meticulous with right. the scouting reports, very detailed, leaves nothing to chance, forgets nothing, a good teacher. Smith gets stripped by Bruton, taken away by Dawkins, and a frustration play trying to throw it down. He will draw the foul and go back to the free throw line. Every part of that was frustration. Yeah. Aubrey's trying to throw it down, Bruton's foul because he thought he got fouled. Hack right there. Aubrey takes it back. A lot, a lot of frustration out there. Yeah. It's felt like it for Aubrey Dawkins today, who had a season low two points here in this building. That's his first point of the night. Dawkins has played in this building a combined 55 minutes and has scored. Four points this season. Well, it's, 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 just, it's an outstanding game plan. They just come in and they say, hey, a lot of people focus on DJ. So, hey, we're going to take Aubrey out of the game. And it almost seems like taking Dawkins out of the game has almost in turn taken Taylor out of the game a little bit because they don't have that. Yeah, so that, that tandem works really well together. Yeah. That's a great take by Jones. Out of, out of all the freshmen that they have here in Memphis, Jones probably gets the least yeah. attention. He's going to be pretty good. Dawkins left that one short. Yeah, they really felt like you forced that one. That'll take us to a timeout. Memphis still in control. Up. A lot of Shocker fans made the trip. It's in their yeah. second year in the league. Shocker fans roll. A lot, a lot of gold and black on Bill Street. Yep.
Maybe they can uh, help will some of the UCF fans as well. It's been a frustrating game for UCF thus far. Taylor's going to head to the line on a parts foul. And that's B.J. Taylor's game when he gets to the foul line. Him getting in there, creating contact. He's 19th in the country in foul shots made. And that's pretty good for a, a, a small guy. Usually the big guys are getting clubbed down there. And this is an important year for B.J. Taylor. That's why there's a lot of satisfaction for him to get to play in the NCAA tournament as Taco Fall comes back in. We'll see him in the NCAA tournament as well for the first time. Taylor's an Orlando native. He was the player of the year in the state. He could have gone somewhere else. Opted to stay home. Has dealt with injury issues his entire career. He's fully healthy this year. A career high 31 starts for him this season. So at the very least, I know this is probably not how he wanted to go out in the conference tournament, but at least you're going to see this kid and fall all get a chance to play in the NCAA tournament this year. They're going to fight again. And a good strategic move by Coach Hardaway. Taco comes in the game, and immediately he gets Maurice off the bench to come in. There is Maurice right on cue. He's closing in on a career high. And he's, he's just comfortable against Taco. Not too many people are. Allen. Oh, what a save by Antoine Jones. Knocked away by Allen. Still loose on the deck. Out of bounds to Memphis. Bounces just aren't going they really are, this yeah. way. Nice save by Jones. You see him come back, get back in the fray. As the ball is bouncing around, there he is diving on the floor. When you hustle and, 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 and put forth that energy, I don't know why, but sometimes you get lucky. You get lucky a lot when you're playing hard. You create your own luck in a lot of ways, it seems like. And now Memphis in no hurry. How about this? Jeremiah Martin just scored seven points, and they're leading the four seed by 17 points. Davenport. There's Taco Fall with the rebound. Stays with this end. This is one of those days nothing's going right for number 15 in the way. Yeah. Well, what a tough day for Aubrey Dawkins. He's very efficient at Michigan, so anytime you see an 0 for 7 line from Aubrey Dawkins, that's very surprising. Taylor for two. Oh. That, that might be the epitome of the first 30 minutes of this game for UCF. Rattles around halfway down and falls and comes back up. And if, if, if UCF's going to stay in this zone, Memphis is content just to burn a little clock yep. and try to score under 10 seconds. Friendly bounce at the other end for Antoine Jones. He's having a, he's having a night. And, and it's not just noted in his points and rebounds. He's really affecting this game. Taco Fall silences the crowd with his third dunk of the night. He's got 77 dunks and 11 jump shots this year. How many jump hooks? I, 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 that might be a count that's a little bit higher. I, I want to see more of those. I want to see, exactly. see. I like the running hook. I like the, the sky hook. Traveling violation on Maurice. You know, I said the last possession that Maurice is comfortable with Taco. Got a little carried away right there. You want to talk about being comfortable with Taco? I'm comfortable around tacos. I just love eating tacos. So naturally, the question is, how many tacos tall is Taco Fall? He is 90 inches tall, 7 feet, 6 inches tall, a 3-inch high crispy shell taco, I would imagine, just for the structural integrity. You stack up 30 of those, and that's Taco Fall. Has to be crispy, and maybe the one with the flip <laughs> Yeah, that helps. A rebound for Fall. 
Duncan still without a field goal tonight. You see Taco Fall among the 40 tallest people on earth. He's taller than any current NBA player as well. He would be the tallest player in the league right now. A tall task in front of UCF right now. Memphis with a seven tomorrow night. As we have a triple header on ESPN. We go Big 12, ACC, and Pac-12. And then this conference tournament's championship will take place on Sunday on ESPN. We'll have the last auto bid in the country to dish out to the champion of this conference tournament. We'll take it right into Selection Sunday coverage. I was going to say, that means we've got to watch the Selection Sunday <laughs> Exactly. Mr. Maurice. To put him up 20. Chopping down the taco. The guy had made 10 threes all year. He's made three threes tonight. And Memphis has its largest lead of the game in what has turned into a rout. Foul on Maurice, his fourth. A new career high for Isaiah Maurice. He stepped out and hit a bunch of jumpers. He has picked up four fouls as well because he's had to guard Taco Fall with each of and earlier in the year, I was talking to Penny about Maurice, and he said, this is much earlier in the year. You know, he wanted him to be more aggressive. He wanted him to try to score more. He wanted him to be more physical defensively without fouling. And you see, for the most part, I think he just picked up another foul, but he's done most of that today. Might be a lane violation or foul? Oh, okay, violation. Looks foul. like a violation, yeah. It's so tough because... Again, Taco Fall, after that shoulder injury last year, he said he lost his muscle memory in terms of free throw shooting. He was around 50% his first three years, and that delivery is has a little bit of that hitch, and I imagine that makes it tough to time out your step into the lane. As yeah. UCF starts to press a little bit, and they get a steal out of it. Yeah, I, I was waiting for this. Uh-oh. Davenport, Maurice. Why not reward Maurice? No, I just thought I was, I was waiting for UCF to turn up the heat a little right, bit. Right, right. You know, they have to change things a little bit. But you see, again, Mr. Davenport, I called him the Energizer Bunny. That time, not on the boards, but coming up with the key steal. Yep. He had a great tournament last year, averaged 18 a game. In the three games that Memphis played. Ooh, Dawkins takes a hard shot. He's going to go to the free throw line. Now, I want to see that one again. I think Davenport just met him upstairs on that one. I'm not sure if that's a foul. It's the third on Davenport. Did he did he make any contact with the head area? He, he might have. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. I didn't, I, didn't really looks, see it on that, that one. pretty clean sure. right there. The, the, the best sign from tonight's game, and we still have 7-14 to go, 20-point right. game, 19-point game now, is Memphis has done it, and Martin has been fairly quiet. Yeah. They're getting contributions across the board. Other people are stepping up. Other people are playing their roles. And if they're going to keep, I mean, now they got a monster waiting for them tomorrow if they make it out of, out of today. <laughs> That's right. Um, you know, but they're going to need, it has to be a team effort. It can't be Jeremiah just went off. I mean, he's only taken five shots today. Martin wants to. He wants to so bad. <laughs> Jones. He's going to get a chance, too. Maurice. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Well, Davenport. Hey, hey, now. He seems to be all right. Now, he's running to the bench. Why, why don't his teammates grab him? They just clear out and let him go flying over the chairs. <laughs> That's going, hey, you know, my guy's got a double-double today. Can you make sure he doesn't get hurt before we play the next game? You know, if it's Taco, and we've all seen that that uh, that uh, blooper with the Shaq coming over, but that's Davenport. Come on, come on. Oh, no, nobody, nobody. <laughs> they don't make a move. Almost Vic, breaks Vic, his leg on Vic, the chair. Vic, Victor Eno's kind of like, I, I, I kind of got you. Like, woo, I hope you slow down. <laughs> Be 
DJ Taylor at the stripe. Seventh all time in UCF history in scoring. 99th career start for B.J. Taylor today. As we said, the nice thing is UCF's going to have another one. They're going to have another game to come. So will Memphis, seemingly, with 6.20 to go and up 18, barring a collapse. They look to be uh, en route to a date with Houston. And there'll be a foul called against Frank Burks, his second. And his bonus for Memphis. You know, if and if they don't make a spectacular run right here and, and get back in this game, there's one one silver lining for UCF. I got to tell a funny story. So, you know, playing in the Big East, coaching in the Big East, you're coaching against a lot of characters uh, <laughs> that are in the Hall of Fame. Sure, sure. You know, we're talking Hall about of Fame coaches and Hall of Fame characters. Yes. Correct. You know, <laughs> you have you know Bayheim, you have Coach Calhoun, you have Patino, you know, we got, you got Jay Wright, you know, uh, uh, for a while that we had Huggy. And so one year we're playing Big East Tournament and Connecticut lost, we beat Connecticut. And going back in the tunnel, Jim Calhoun says, you know, I like it when we lose early in the conference tournament. It gives us more rest for the NCAA sure. tournament. Sure, okay. That is a, that's a nice way to spin it. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and certainly it, and there's truth to that. And so maybe, you know, UCF can go quickly lick their wounds, get excited, get re revitalized, get some energy for whoever they're going to end up matched up with. Right now, set is an eight seed in Joe Lunardi's bracketology, one of four teams that seems to be slotted in for the tournament. We'll get to see Taco fall in the tournament. What an amazing story. His mother, Mary Ann, let Taco go to America to play college basketball on the condition that he got a degree. Well, he's about to graduate with a double major in business and psychology. Mary Ann saw Taco play one game his entire college career. It was senior night. What a magical night it was when they got that victory over Cincinnati. The woman on the left there is Mandy Wettstein. She is a PR specialist for Liberty Christian High School where Taco went to school in America. Mandy ended up taking in both Taco and one of his best friends and operating as a host mom for Taco and his friend during his college run at UCI. And I mean, if that emotion doesn't get to you, I don't know what to tell you. That is an incredibly moving moment to see a young man who didn't come to America until he was 16 years old and to have so many people take an investment in his life. There's a good feed and a bucket for Davenport. Taco Fall, if you've never spoken to the young man, one of the kindest, well-meaning, humble young men you'll ever get a chance to meet. There's the first bucket of the game for Aubrey Dawkins. It's been a while. Yeah. But I'll tell you, when you, when you start flipping on, and our, our friends at CBS and Turner, as they bring you the NCAA tournament, you're going to get uh, a chance to learn a lot about Taco Fall. He's one of the great stories, one of the great kids in college hoops. He's going to be an engineer if he doesn't play pro or maybe after he finishes playing pro. Just, you know, a, an awesome young man, very happy. I know the American Conference is to have a man like that in this league. Big fella's going to get a little blow right here. Yep. He might be done Maybe for the, for the game. game, right? Might yeah. be done. <laughs> well, re well, remember, we have had horn issues in this game. I, I, I Taco Fall was trying to come off the floor. There was a substitution, and they were trying to put the ball back in play. We've had horn issues in this game. So I don't think anybody realized that Taco was going to the bench. No, ball's flying up the court. Guys are walking off the court. Well, 25 minutes for Taco Fall, right around his average. Might be, as you said, done for the game. Allen, tough take. Chad Brown hit the deck hard. Isaiah Maurice comes up with another rebound. Yeah, what a night for him. Now, see, the, the beauty or the horror of tournament play is Maurice is feeling really good about himself. Right. Everyone at Memphis is feeling really good about him. Now, he needs to bottle that up, rewind, and do it again tomorrow. 
That's the hard part, right? That's the hard part. <laughs> Especially against the team that's going to be waiting for him on the other side. That, that defensive mammoth that is the Houston Cougars. Allen picks up his fourth foul. And all of them shots tomorrow are not going to be as open as they are, as they have that's been today. Right. Two games against Houston. Martin at the line. Yeah. Yeah, Finally, yeah, his, the, his some tenth, points. <laughs> his tenth point of the night. Yeah, eight of them. He has one field goal. He's got eight points at the free throw line. Memphis played Houston one time during the regular season, very early in the season. I think it was a second conference game, if I'm not mistaken. January the 6th, a 13 point Houston victory. Kareem Bruton had the big game for Memphis. He had 25 in that contest as Griffin hits the three. Well, they're all going to have to come to play tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And, and, and maybe Martin's just chilling today because he knows tomorrow. He's got Corey Davis, Jalen Robinson, and Amari Brooks waiting for him. Maybe, maybe he's just giving it up for Maurice now because he knows he's going to have to have a big game against Houston. And that's accurate. But Brown puts it in at a five. Uh, we'll take us to the under four timeout. Maurice has been the high man tonight. Nine appearances. That was just seven at Temple. He's that's right. A, yep. a rack more when he was at Penn. You know, and not too many people that have given as much of himself to this game. You know, not just the wins, the losses, but the young men that, he, that he's worked with to the city of Philadelphia, what he's done, you know. And so him not being a temple anymore hurts this league. And that's not saying anything. That's not That's not anything on Aaron oh, McKee exactly, or anything like that. Exactly. It's, it's, it's strictly talking it's about the stuff. legacy that Fran Dunphy has created as head coach 10 NCAA trips by the way at Penn right, so that's, oh, that's, oh, that's, yeah. so that's 17 17 total trying yeah. to make it 18 you see with the Florida win over LSU today that put Temple into the last four in categories so any win right now for Temple is a big win Maurice finds Davenport Maurice throwing dimes also <laughs> now I have to give full disclaimer I have a picture of Coach Carrell who coached me. Pete Carrell, yep. And I work with at Princeton in my office. But you see Dunphy in the back. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, let's not let the facts get in the way exactly. of a good story, Coach. Exactly. Come on. Finish up here in Memphis for the day session. We've got tennis coming up for you. The number two ranked player in the world, Rafa Nadal, in action at the Baribas Open. And it's coming up. Now that's a hook and hold right there. There you go. Was, hey, how about that? We saw one of those get called earlier against Terrell Allen. And Chad Brown commits a foul here. I told you tennis is coming up right here on ESPN 2. Sports Center on ESPN. I'm talking about the comeback of Zion Williamson. Adam Schefter explains why Kareem Hunt's suspension ended up being eight games. And reaction and analysis on Tiger Woods twice hitting the water at the Players Championship on 17, an infamous hole. That's coming up over on ESPN with Keith and Jay. One field goal for Jeremiah Martin, and they're going to beat UCF by a solid margin today. A really good UCF team. Very good. You know, it's not, tournament it's not, team. Exactly. Tough defensive team. There might be something to this Memphis team in this building. Can, they, can the magic? Can the magic last two more games? Yeah. Was, well, and I was going to say. With that being said, will they have enough in the tank? Jeremiah Martin sure does. See, the, the young man needs to go right. You know, shake everyone's hand, dap everyone up on the Sit down. Go right to the ice <laughs> get the, bath. Get the rest. Penny, <laughs> let, him, let him leave the court, Penny. Go right, get, 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 get in the ice bucket, take the ice bath. 
what's that machine they, 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 the, cry, they, the, the, the cryo chamber yeah, or something? Get in that thing for a few minutes. You know? A lot of. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know. Then go to bed. I, I don't know a lot of your daily schedule. <laughs> I didn't realize cryo chamber was such a big part of your daily routine yeah. there, Coach. 33 minutes, though, for Jeremiah Martin. I, I mean, he's one of my favorite players. To yeah. Watch. He's, his scoring is his drawing attention, but he's a basketball player. Yep. Well, UCF will get ready for the NCAA tournament. Boy, I, there are night fans all over the place who've been longing to hear that. First time in 14 years, UCF is slotted to go to the tournament. Isaiah Maurice, a 21-point night. The best night of his college career. A few dimes, a few rebounds. Yep. He's going to sleep well tonight, too. Harris draws the foul. Some of the subs of both sides will start to trickle into the game. Victor Eno and Evan Olds for Memphis. You get Ryan Anders into the game for UCF. What, what, what time is that game on? The, the, the Houston-Memphis game? Too one. local, so too local. So we're about uh, 22 and a half hours away. Let me just say this: it's going to be a party at the FedEx Forum tomorrow. <laughs> too a Saturday afternoon, oh, baby. Man, this everybody's going to hit up Beale Street after the game, I'm sure. <laughs> it's going to be jumping in here. Well, and listen, I promise I, I, you this: I, the yeah. Cougars will show up. Yes. So, the, I mean, there's going to be a high level of intensity. On the defensive end tomorrow between Houston and Memphis. Yes, it is. Memphis is good as it comes in terms of turning teams over in this conference. Houston right up there. So two of the better defensive units in this conference. Houston one of the best in the country. We're going to get a major opportunity tomorrow. Both groups are really good perimeter players. We're going to have some fun here tomorrow. It's gonna be, it, get ready. Get your, get your shoes on, man. It's going to be excited. some pace. There's going to be some pace, I think, tomorrow, too, between Houston and Memphis. We'll have it for you starting up at 3 Eastern. Right here on ESPN 2. One second on the shot clock. Look at him throw it up to Jones. Shot clock violation. Give me a sense of how you regroup. You won two and two. You still have to come back in less than a day to try to make this happen. Give me a sense of the process and scheduling as uh, you're trying to balance getting ready for tomorrow and trying to rest up. If I'm pinning? Yep. Well, well, you know, I said it in jest but, but, uh, when I was talking about Martin, but it's true. You know, get your treatment, get your ice, get. Your, your, your nourishment, get hydrated, and go to bed. Yes. You know, they probably will meet, watch a little film, you know, but not too much. They know what they're going to get with Houston tomorrow. Right. They, they know what they have to do. They know what Houston's going to bring to the table. You know, at this point, you know, you, you play yesterday, you play today, you want for your third game in three days against one of the best teams in the country, right. in my opinion. And so just get your rest and come ready to play. It's, 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 it's not necessarily about... You know, a whole bunch of walking through a tactics or, or, or something like that. It's just get rest and come come bring your energy and come ready to play. Right. Does Memphis have a little bit of magic? They haven't made the tournament since 2014 under Josh Pastner. That might just be the perfect cap. Alex Lomax. Just his fourth three of the season. That was great set. All part of <laughs> an impressive Memphis performance. Their second win in as many days. And a foul on Burks. With 34 seconds left. You know, the, as you go through it, the way I looked at it, yep. you know, there's 
four different parts of the season. You know, you have the preseason, which I call the pre-league. Non-conference so games. Leading right? up to non-conference. Right. You know, then you have the conference play. That's the second part. Then you have the conference tournament. And then you have the NCAA postseason. And so UCF team, you, know, you look at them over there, they're upset. They're de dejected. You know, they did not have a good day. Yeah. Did not have a good day. But the beauty of it is because how they've handled their business in the first part of the season and the second part of the season, a disappointing third part still leads them to a fourth part. That's right. So they, they, to, to, the sun will come out tomorrow, as they say, and they got a chance. And tomorrow this place is going to be jumping. Again. With the Cougars in the top. Yes, sir. Coach Dawkins has done a great job with that program. It's disappointing today. But on Sunday, starting Sunday, you're going to get another chance. And Memphis is going to get another chance in this tournament.